Hi friends and welcome back. I am so glad to uh, see you again. I was not able to film last week. As many of you know, we had a son headed to college last week and I sure thought I was gonna get a video in and as the week progressed, I just realized it was not gonna happen. <laughs> we had uh, some friends uh, visiting from out of town um, one night and had another activity another night and then the days were busy preparing for those and then getting him ready for college and then we were gone about four days getting him um, where he needed to be and, and settled in and spending a few days um, around the, the campus and the college and the town there. And so it was a really good several days, but um, I got a little behind on my quilting. So I have tons to catch you up with uh, this week. So I have several quilts that have already gone back home um, because I didn't want to keep them around here once they were finished, even though I wasn't able to film. So we'll be looking at those through pictures, and then I have a whole stack here of others, and I can't wait to get started. So before I start into the quilts today, I wanted to show you the um, wide backs that I did get in the mail um, this week. I had purchased them, and they arrived, so I just thought uh, we could go through them real quick, and I'll show you uh, just some of the things that I'm going to carry here in my shop. These uh, aren't going to be for sale um, unless you're ordering from, unless I'm doing your long arm quilting is what I'm trying to say. So if you have a quilt that you don't want to send a backing for, um, either it's too expensive to send it in the mail or you just don't want to have to go out and find your own um, backing fabric, then I will be carrying some in my shop and um, you'll be able to purchase those when I do your long arm quilting. So let me show you. First of all, so I have five new ones that arrived and um, these are hefty because a wide, <laughs> a wide backing comes usually in like a 15, 15 to 18 yards on, um, on a bolt. So this is the first one that I got. This one is called Trellis and this is a Wilmington print. And um, I like this one because it's um, a little bit of a gray and a black. I like that it had just a little bit of, um, not a solid grid line, but you know, just the, the little bit of smudgeness in there. And this is gonna work well um, on some um, flower type floral quilts um, that need a black backing. Uh, the trellis kind of reminds me of that. This would also work well on a geometric quilt or um, you know something like that. So um, Wilmington, yeah, Wilmington Prince is the maker and then this one is called Trellis. So kind of a grayish blackish um, would work on both of those quilts types of this. This next one is um, a new vendor to me. This is called Paintbrush Studio. And this one is, I want to say it's 118 inch wide, so really, really big. And this is a green, let me see if it said, oh my goodness, is it heavy? Um, I don't see an actual name of this one. I can go back to my invoice and pull out the name, but this is a green. Um, let me see how well I can get this in here. So kind of a mottled green color, greenish with a um, little bit darker, but then it does have some like wavy lines in there and I don't know how well that's gonna show up, but just some textured type of lines in there. So the green, again, work well on a floral one. Um, sometimes, a lot of times I'm getting quilts from people that they're quilts that they made 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> And they're pulling them out of their stash because my motto is every quilt is worth finishing, whether it's your first quilt, uh, your grandmother's quilt, or it's one that you finished um, yesterday or 15 years ago. They need to be finished, okay? You sp spent a lot of time and energy in making them, and they're only useful if we finally finish them. So because I get some projects that have, um, what I want to say, some older fabrics that um, you may not be able to find backings that match the colors on the front. This is one of those prints, this one, and even the black one that I just showed you. This will match some of those color schemes from 15, 20 years ago. Um, some of the florals, some of um, that kind of thing, that this is a, a nice print that'll match some of those. Um, a little different, it's not gonna match perfectly, but it will, it will work well with some of those older quilts that you may have that need to be finished and and that's the reason I purchased this one. 
so a greenish wand. Here is a fun one. This one is by Maywood Studios, and this is a Kimberbell print. This is 108 inch wide. And again, it doesn't have the, the actual name of it, but uh, I thought this was a fun one. This was is like a, an aqua green, a uh, little bit of a bluish color. I love the flowers. This is more of a modern, you know, like the green one I just showed you would be something that you could use um, on some older ones. This would definitely be a fabric that you would want to use on some newer projects uh, just because it would blend better with the, um, the types of quilting, the types of fabrics, um, types of designs that are out now. A real playful, fun print. So um, I think this one would look well, would work well with some of the Lori Holt prints. It would work well with some, um, some of those brighter, cheerier um, fabric ways, color ways. Really like that one. A lot of fun. This next one is also a Kimberbell, which is done by Maywood Studio. And this is 108 inch wide. And this one is a red. What I would say is like um, a candy apple red. Love the swirls in there. Um, I think this will work really well. Some, this would work well on um, some patriotic ones. You could use this as a backing on that. Christmas it would work well. Um, any of your um, even you know juvenile prints that are uh, the brighter colors, this would work well. So lots of choices there. I tried to pick some backings that would work well on a lot of different types of quilts. And so the fifth one I have today, this is also a Wilmington print. Um, and this one is 108 inch wide. This one's called Whimsy. Another black print, a little more um, with uh, not so much a floral, but um, I want to say leafy type thing. It would work well with florals, but with some, it's got the the um, branches in there are a, a lighter gray. There are some darker grays on that backing, backing too. Um, so I would say the background print is a gray, and then there's some darker um, black lines, and then the lighter gray lines on that. Um, so a lot of the gray prints or even like bright colors, um, like the, uh, the fabulous, is that what it was called? The fabulous great big, um, bold quilt that I did a couple weeks ago. This would have been a good backing for that one. Um, any bright prints, bright, bold purples and oranges and the, and the Kona colors, you know, all of that kind of stuff. This would work well on that. Um, I think it would also work well with some older fabrics because, um, especially, you know, like the mauve colors, is that even a word? Mauve, uh, the mauve colors, um, some of the greens and floral prints from several years back. I think this one will work well on that one, on those types of quilts as well. So all of these are new in my studio. These are all, uh, this one has 19 yards, 18 yards. So, uh, you know, doing a big quilt, we can get four or five, um, maybe six quilts out of this, depending on how wide, um, how long. You know, we talk about wide and long. Okay, so this are 100, these are 19 yards, but it's 108 inches wide. So depending on, you know, what how much of that yardage we need, I could get four or five six quilts out of that um, so those will be fun all right so let's start into some quilts and like I said I have several here we'll kind of go back and forth I'll show you you know maybe one that I have here with me and then a couple that have already gone home um, so we can kind of get a, a mix in that way so let's start uh, let me show you some bigger pictures of this one first this is Sarah's quilt and this will be going home this week let me show you some larger pictures and then we'll talk about this one So this is a baby quilt that uh, Sarah has done, and this uh, these are all five inch squares. These 
I can't remember if um, she said this was a charm pack or if it was just a pack of Tilda Pinks that were put together in a quilt store that she she visited. I can't quite remember those details, but they are about five inch squares, so it could have been a charm pack. I'm, I'm not sure. These are all Tilda um, prints, and they are all of her pink um, variety. So Tilda, you know, has kind of a rosy pink um, colorway, not a bright... Um, baby pink but a little more muted with a kind of a rosy pink color so you can kind of see how um, Sarah has done like a middle square and then done you can see it from the bigger pictures how she's kind of done um, you know worked out from the middle so it is kind of a radiated pattern and then with those polka dots around the edge again that were in the middle and then around um, so kind of radiated out from the center. So I don't have a link for a whole pack of these pinks, but I did list very, I did list them separately um, in the description below. So if you're interested in like this polka dot print, and if you can see, it's not just polka dots, but inside the the larger pink, there are lots of little dots in there. This one is called a pink paint dots. It's got white um, polka dot in it. This one is a white background with a pink tr um, stars, and then here's more of a, a grid. Here's a white one that has the dark um, pink polka dots on it. So a nice blend. Um, they're all pinks and whites, but you kind of alternate between the dark, the pink as the background with white as the foreground, and others where it's white as the background and then pink as the, the foreground print on it. So really, really cute. So um, this very simple quilt, you could lay out, um, take a charm pack and lay it out like that. This one measures 36 by 46. Here is a gray backing that Sarah chose. And this is, let me hold it up here so you can see. We've used this one on several different quilts. Um, I think this is a wide backing. I really, I can look for um, the name of this one, but very versatile. She's used this on a lot of different quilts and it works really well. So there you can see the pantograph very distinctly. This pantograph is called Dear Heart. Um, very versatile print. I actually, on the long arm underneath all of these others, I'm using this same pantograph on um, a wedding quilt. But how this is very versatile in that for this baby quilt, I made these hearts um, very small. I want to say, um, if you were doing it on your uh, Pro Stitcher, I think I reduced it to like um, a width... Um, width I locked it in so it was a five and I can't remember if that was width or height that was probably width of the pantograph this way because this one stitches out this way so a heart above your your swirl not really a swirl but your line there and then a heart below and a heart above so it stitches out in one line so I think this was a five inch width um, this way so I made it pretty small because this is a baby quilt because my squares on the front um, are smaller and um, so you can you can change the scale of your pantograph depending on uh, the quilt pattern on the front and also the, the size of the quilt because this is a smaller quilt 36 by 46 I don't want these hearts that are that big unless that's what you like um, but for this one just the more texture and um, just to go along with the smallness of a baby, the smallness of a baby quilt, the smaller works really well. So what you can't see is underneath all of these other quilts, there is one on the long arm, and it is a very large quilt, um, like 85 by 105. It's very large, and it has applique hearts on it that are, you know, a good six inches, the heart itself. So for that one, I increased the size of the Deer Heart Pantograph much larger. I think I wanted, did it at like a 7 or an 8 inch width. Um, and that coordinated well with the size of the hearts in the, um, in the pattern itself. And also the size of the quilt. It would have been stitching it to death if I would have done this small on an 85 by 105 inch quilt. It would have just been stitching it to death. So I increased it so that there's a little more space. It's it's um, complemented by the, the size of the hearts that are in that, in, in that quilt top as well. So very, very cute. Love the pinks and the gray together. All right, so let's move on and let's talk about one that is not here with me, but let me insert some pictures of it and then I will talk about it.
Is this not an adorable quilt? This was so pretty. I have it pulled up on my computer behind me, or behind the camera here, so that I can um, talk about the quilt itself. This is all applique. This is Shelly's quilt. This pattern name is called Blessings of Spring. She did say it was from Shabby Fabrics. I was not able to find this, um, this quilt pattern anymore. They do have some banners or some door um, hangers that have a few of these similar designs that are um, done for some spring months, but I could not find the fabric or the uh, pattern itself. It may be something if you're interested in, you may need to go out on Etsy and see if you can find it there, um, but I did not find it on Shabby Fabrics website. So, a really fun quilt. All of the um, appliques were very nicely done and uh, just really, really cute. Um, all of the pinks and reds of the fabrics and um, this one measured 53 by 59 so not a huge a huge quilt a nice this will make a nice wall hanging or even um, thrown over the couch I love the big floral print that Shelly used on the on the border and also on the backing it was really cute and the little house I just you know how I love houses so um, that one was really cute uh, this feel, even though it says blessings of spring, to me it felt very Valentine type, February type of a quilt. So it would definitely be, um, uh, you know, be able to be used on that time. Let me insert here, I showed you some bigger pictures of it. Let me insert some closer up pictures so that you can see the pantograph that I used on this quilt. So that pantograph is called Truffles, and that is on um, the Urban Elements website. And Truffles is a free pattern on the Urban Elements website. So if you are a digital long arm quilter, you'll wanna go check that one out. This one was really cute to use because of all of the hearts in the um, pattern just matched with this pantograph perfectly. Then Shelly also asked if I could use a colored thread. And so on this one, I used a climbing rose thread. This is an Omni thread. And um, I did the same in the top as in the bobbin because the back color, the, the fabric on the backing was that um, the, the deep um, cranberry color. And so it was not gonna work to use one color on the top and one color on the bottom. There would, there would have been too many uh, chances for the tension issues to be a problem. So I used that climbing rose thread on both of the top, uh, in the um, top thread as well as the bobbin thread, and I think it worked out really well. And Shelly, this one has already gone home, so Shelly's already received it back in the mail, and she said she was totally thrilled with it, really liked that. And because the top has a lot of those rich cranberry color fabrics on it anyway, even though we used a colored thread, um, it's again a secondary design. So from a distance, when you saw from the larger pictures, it just blends in with the design. When you get in closer is when you see that colored thread and it really complemented the cranberry colors of the, of the fabrics that were in that quilt top. Back to the pantograph, I love this truffles one. Um, I love the, it feels like very, um, the paper doily hearts almost, you know, that you would have in grade school at Valentine's Day, just that heart, then with the scalloped edge all the way around the heart. It has plenty of swirls in it and um, inside the heart as well as on the outside of the heart. So it just worked really well. This one is, um, let me go back. Um, I'm looking at my computer here. It does stitch out with the hearts um, almost laid over sideways a little bit so if you were wanting them to look up and down on your quilt top you'll need to load your quilt top accordingly um, otherwise they'll stitch out side to side so the the um, the hearts are laid over a little bit to the edge there and um, let me go back to them again this has been a you know almost a couple weeks now since I did this one so um, trying to remember how I did it Okay, I went back to um, my computer so I could see how I stitched this out. Again, I apologize because it's been a couple weeks since I did this one and trying to remember back. So I went back uh, onto my Pro Stitcher to see how I had stitched this out. And I did 
orient this one so I, I loaded the quilt sideways so um, the applique would have all been turned this way then because this one stitches out um, you have a heart and then a heart they're kind of backwards you know one tipped one tipped this way so that when I stitch this one out it looks like the hearts are coming down the quilt like this one this pantograph would work well the other way too if I would have loaded it um, so that the applique was straight this way and then the lines would have been um, the hearts would have been tipped a little bit more but um, it would have stitched out across I like the orientation um, up and down for the the string of hearts um, it also may have depended on the backing fabric and to be honest I can't remember at this point I'm thinking maybe the selvages uh, the way that it, it fit on the um, the backing fabric that Shelly were you know sent me that the selvages were on and those are a little easier to load I, I can't remember to be honest I can't remember it's been too long ago <laughs> but I did orient it where I lay I loaded the quilt sideways so that it appears that the hearts are coming down um, in vertical lines it would stitch out really well the other way too but that's the way that I chose to do the quilt all right so that's Shelly's quilt and it has already gone home and that's all um, I've linked the truffles pantograph down below it is a free pantograph the fabric and the pattern I, I don't have any um, information except that from shabby fabrics so it may be something that you want to um, get a hold of them and ask about I don't even know how old that quilt pattern was that that Shelly worked on all right sorry for that muffled that just didn't work real, really well did it um, let's move on to Marsha's quilt and it's another pink one and let me remove this one so that you can see Marsha's quilt underneath and then we will talk about it So Marsha made this quilt for a friend who is uh, going through breast cancer. And I know Marsha does this a lot. She has um, church friends that uh, are diagnosed with um, breast cancer. Then I know she always makes a quilt for them. And so the fabrics are all ones that she had in her stash. Some of them are breast cancer fabrics, like you can see uh, the ribbons here in this one, but not all of them. They're all different pinks. She's thrown in some um, darker black ones, even some, um, just different ones but uh, they all coordinate really well so don't feel like when you're doing a, a breast cancer quilt that it all has to be breast cancer fabric I did link some of that down below but obviously you could use some from your stash as well anything that would coordinate so Marsha's pattern that she used for this comes from the scrappiness is happiness book by Lori Holt and it is the string quilt he, um, this is on page 86 or a few pages before that actually shows you how to make the block itself so this is a quilt that you can make any size that you want Marsha's measures 51 by 60 it really just depends on um, how many you want to do and a string quilt is super easy um, there are a couple way, different ways of doing it so in the scrappiness is happiness book Lori talks about using her interfacing so you would cut the squares I believe she's cutting them let me look real quick nine inch squares is what she's cutting the interfacing and then you are basically layering um, one of the strips usually in the middle or you could start on the edge so here are some different examples it doesn't all have to be the same widths of fabrics it's whatever you have here's some different widths um, a fabric these are just long strips that you have and you um, you can start on one side and layer that one um, and then you sew the next one and fold that one back and then you start do the next one um, I do have a second string quilt that's at the very bottom of this stack that I'm going to show you and they actually start in the middle so stitching this middle one down and I know Lori on her website will have um, a tutorial where she did this probably a couple years back now um, but if you need a tutorial to know how to do that but that's what Marsha did um, is use this pattern 
what I was saying though is Lori Holt uses interfacing on hers. Marsha did hers different. She actually had scraps or uh, squares of batting and she had um, her square of batting and then she would stitch the fabrics right onto that batting. So because she did that, we did not use an extra batting inside the quilt. The batting was already in with the fabrics. And so it worked out really well. I was telling Marsha it did, it does appear, not terribly, but a little bit puffy um, in between some of the stitches. And the reason I think that is is because the um, batting is already stitched along these lines right here. And, um, you know, and obviously down in these strips too. So really the batting doesn't have anywhere to go. It has to stay right there. And it worked out really well. It really feels nice on here. Another th neat thing, Marsha chose a cuddle backing. And with the batting already being on the back of the pieces and a cuddle backing, which is a minky, cuddle is the brand name of it, um, it's a nice feel to the quilt. It has the stability of a quilt. Um, without adding an extra layer of batting. I think it would have worked well if you did, but because we already had one layer of batting and a minky, it, um, it worked out really well. First time I had done that, and, um, but it worked out really well. So you can see um, now this cuddle back backing fabric, it has the hearts already imprinted in. So you can see like this heart here, this heart here, those are like depressions in the cuddle fabric where um, that's part of the print. And then you can see the design, the pantograph that we use. This one is called Hearts and Ribbons. And you can see the breast cancer ribbon. Here you can see it here, the breast cancer ribbon. And then it alternates with a heart right next to it, back and forth. Now the neat thing about this pantograph, it is also a free pantograph on the Urban Elements website, and which is really neat, really, really soft. This is gonna be so nice um, for Marsha's friend. I did use a pink thread, just seemed like it would go well. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a pale pink, um, but it just blends really well with those fabrics on the top. And then in with the backing. So, so pretty. This is one of those patterns that can use up a lot of your scraps and you don't even have to cut them a certain length. You don't have to cut them a certain width. Um, you trim up the block afterwards because you already have that, the, um, either the batting or the interfacing. When I get to the other string quilt, I'm gonna show you a different way that that one was done. Um, but a super simple way to, um, this could be a leaders and enders project. Um, you know, usually our leaders and enders are small things, but you could do a block like this, having these sitting next to your sewing machine, maybe with just a basket um, on the floor full of all these different strips. And obviously Marsh is done in a colorway of pink. You could do one colorway, um, or it could be a very scrappy one, like the one I'm gonna show you in a bit. All right, so really nice. Let's move on to, let me see what the next one is. I have another one that has already gone back home. So let me show you some pictures of that one and then we will talk about it. So do you recognize this quilt? <laughs> this is the 2022, ended in 2023, uh, Fat Quarter Shop Designer Mystery Quilt. And this is the second one of these that I have done. And these are so, so pretty. This is the um, Nantucket um, Summer Fabric by Camille Ross Kelly. Um, if you can find it anywhere, you better grab it because uh, there's not much of it left left around. So you can still buy this pattern, all of the patterns for this designer mystery, um, but it doesn't come as a kit anymore. And I know there's a new designer mystery that's, if you're in it, you're uh, enjoying that one as well. But uh, I've never joined one of the Fat Quarter Shop designer um, quilt alongs like this, but it might be fun to do some. Um, as some, one of these years, right? So the colors of this one are so pretty, the blues and uh, with the overall with the white and then you've got the different shades of blue and a little bit of the green, just a super, super classy um, 
quilt here. And then, um, again, I'm looking at pictures on my uh, computer behind my camera screen here. So um, the backing fabric, I believe, is the what was called for, what was offered by Fat Quarter Shop. And uh, so Patsy um, said she liked the Wave on Wave that I had used with the last designer mystery one that I did um, a month or so ago. But she wanted to... Um, so to discuss some other choices. So she gave me some other ideas that she had and we ended up going with the clamshell duchess. Now you'll notice from this clamshell duchess, this one is um, an intense pattern and um, very dense. Um, and I used this once before on um, another quilt, so you may recognize this one, but it is a very dense pattern. One of the things about the clamshell duchess that you need to understand um, both as the one who's asking for it to be done on your quilt and also as a long arm quilter is there is a lot of over stitching on this one every time that um, print comes back down so you've got the clamshell okay every time that that um, design comes back down it is stitching over other threads that are already there so that um, triangle piece almost like a vase type piece right there um, has a lot of stitching over and over so you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven, six to eight times is it, is that one point being stitched over again and again. So just be aware of that when you're when you're stitching it. It's not a big deal. Um, that part of the of the print or the thread buildup. Um, some long armors don't necessarily like that. It's use it uses a ton of thread um, to stitch this one out, but it's really really pretty. Um, and this one nest well together. I do not have mine, if you go back and look at the, um, oh, let me insert some pictures of the close-up of the quilting. So you you might notice that I do not bring my rows down where that the point uh, the bottom point of that clamshell comes down and touches the arching one. So those precise points um, are tough as a long arm quilter. So when that that bottom point comes down and you're trying to match it to that other arch perfectly, it's difficult to do. Um, as you're rotating the quilt, not everything rotates exactly the same, and there's a lot of tricks that we use to try to get them to match up. I can use um, some batting tucked in behind the bars, um, some what we call milking the the quilt on the back bar, trying to to get it all to um, to line up. You have drawing in from that quilt, uh, all of the stitching. Um, draws that fabric in some so it's just difficult with this pattern I don't feel that it's necessary to actually have that um, point touch the clamp touch the arch down below it so I separate mine a little bit I think it's absolutely beautiful the way it is and then I'm not having to to try to match up that point at every spot along that quilt it's just not needed um, so I hope you'll understand that as um, as a long arm quilter those precise patterns are difficult uh, at times and those that do it can do it really well um, and if you have a design that you're wanting where it's a precise one you might seek out one of those that you've seen on Instagram or something where you know that they do that really well um, because it's a difficult task and it's um, it takes a lot of practice and um, I hope you'll understand that so we do try to steer away from those if we can we don't always aren't always able to um, but that's one of the reasons why is because that is pretty difficult to get to line up. And again, I don't think with this clamshell duchess it's, ne it's necessary to have that come down all the way. It's very beautiful the way it is. So with this one, I did use um, a slightly off-white colored thread, not a total white on this one. Um, and I think it looks really, really cute. I just love this. this. And so this one has already gone home to Patsy, and she will be doing the, um, the binding herself on that one. So very beautiful, Patsy. All right, let's move on to another one that I have here in the studio with me. Let me remove this one while you look at some bigger pictures.
All right, you might recognize this um, pattern. I have done several of these for Becky. Um, this is a great pattern to use. A real quick wedding gift if you're needing that. Um, this is a pattern by Woodbury Way and the name of the pattern is called High Tide Remix and I will link that down below. It is available as a PDF so you can get it right away or uh, a paper version of the pattern. So if you know, notice from Becky's, she has really picked three colors. So she has the white, she has green, and she has blue. And she's again using things from her uh, stash, I'm assuming, all different kinds of prints and just coordinating those, uh, matching it. Sometimes you have green with the blue, sometimes you have green with the white, sometimes you have two different greens or two different blues. And um, you know, or here's a blue with the white, just really, really nice. This just, and it goes together quickly and um, a great pattern to have in your stash so that you can use anytime you need a quilt done quickly. This one measures 65 by 82. And again, you can make it as large or as small as you would wish, depending on what fabrics you have. These are two and a half inch strips. So if you have a jelly roll, even that would work really well, or you can just have, pull from your scrap baskets uh, for your from your two and a half inch scrap basket and pull three different colorways and um, and uh, it all goes together really quickly. So the backing fabric that um, Becky chose is a floral, fauna and floral, kind of a um, blue and green mixed in. A little more green than the blue, but it works well with the colors on the front. Really, really nice. So obviously for a green and blue quilt, I felt like a good pantograph would be this leaflet pantograph. And let me, um, there you can see it's just a leaf and an inner one. It does have a little bit of a, of a swirl here. You can see that. The backing is a little busy to be able to see the pantograph, so I'm trying to get it, um, the lighting just right where you can see it. I used an off-white thread on this one. There you can see it a little bit. Didn't do this one real tight. This one, this pantograph has a nice coverage. You can see, um, you know, not a lot of open spaces. But inside the leaf itself, you know, that's a good, you know, good inch, inch and a half. So I made it, you know, a little bit large, not large per se, but just um, coordinating it with the size of the prints there. Didn't feel like it needed to be super tight on this one. So notice this is a white, but the blue too, how well those coordinate together. Very, really cute. I love this one. I gotta show you this fabric. This is, this book fabric. Isn't that darling? I love that. So all different kinds, you know, sometimes the fabric is um, a print or like a, you know, a geometric print, kind of a grid type. Sometimes it's diamonds. Then there is some of the backing fabric used here on the front of it, but there's even some some geese and goslings and stuff so just depending on the color of the fabric works really well this is a really pretty print as well this one has um, different spices or different herbs not spices <laughs> parsley oregano basil it's really a cute one so a nice quick quilt Again, the use us up your stash. So Woodbury Way is the um, designer of that one, and I have linked that one down below so that you can see. You can get one of those patterns for yourself. Really, really cute. All right, let's move on to a couple quilts that have already gone home, and let me insert um, some pictures here so that you can see them. So Susan didn't remember where she uh, bought the fabric, where she the where she got the pattern. She w just didn't remember details about this one. She's had this one finished for quite a while, and uh, wasn't even sure if she liked it. But once it's quilted, she likes it. So it may be one that she passes on, may not keep for herself, 
Um, but again, your quilts are worth finishing. If it's not a colorway, you know, maybe when you first picked it up, it was something you thought you'd like, and then as you're going, you really don't like it, but somebody is. There is somebody in your family or your friends that would really love that colorway, and so it's worth finishing and uh, giving it away. So bright colors, the pinks and the greens. Uh, I like how this, you know, this the um, the squares. Um, it's almost like a double effect. It's almost kaleidoscope. You see lots of different patterns when you look at this one. The white backing fabric is really pretty with this. Um, and this was just a solid white, but it really shows up the quilting because on the front you, you, you lose a lot of the quilting because of the busy fabrics on the front and the busyness of the pattern. Um, and so it just blends in, but the quilting on the back is really pretty. You could actually use this as a whole cloth quilt by flipping it over the other way. It's really, really cute. So this pantograph is called Espresso, and you've seen this on many quilts that I've done. Adds a lot of texture into this quilt. Um, it was just really nice. We did a white thread all over. There was enough white on the front that it blended with that as well. Um, but I didn't want to use any sort of color uh, with that white backing fabric. You really needed to keep it the white color. Love, love, love the texture on that backing fabric, if, uh, if I haven't said that enough already. Um, so Espresso is uh, linked down below. It's a very versatile pantograph, can be enlarged, can be shrunk. I would say I kind of did this one as a medium, kind of in between. Um, it can be enlarged you know, if you don't want it that dense. Nice coverage, lot, nice swirls. It just adds a real classy effect to it. And again, depending on how you load your quilt is the way that you will get, you know, it stitches out this way. If you load your quilt sideways, it would be look more like they were coming down in a vertical. Um, it nests together well enough that it's really not, um, not necessarily directional. I mean, that one ribbon running through would either go vertical or horizontal. Um, but it nests so well together. It really is not a factor either way. So a beautiful quilt um, Bright pinks bright fuchsias and the, the Bright greens and just uh, it was a really fun quilt to do so Susan is has that back now And she's working on the binding fabric for that I do have another one of Susan's that you're not going to want to miss because this one is a very big quilt and very bright quilt and a lot a lot of fun So here's some pictures of her next one This is called the Butterfly Quilt, and this is a pattern by Tula Pink. All of the fabrics are Tula Pink fabrics. This is a very big quilt. This one measured 98 by 92. It was actually a little wider than it was long. <clears throat> I know Susan mentioned that she um, changed up the borders a little bit from what the actual pattern says. Uh, I think there were not borders on all four sides if I remember right um, but she adjusted it to the way she wanted and it's it turned out really really nice these are all Tula Pink fabrics as I said I have linked some Tula Pink fabrics in the, in the description below they might not be the exact same but if you know Tula Pink's colorways you understand that it will all work there is a this pattern is still available through the fat quarter shop and uh, just a really fun quilt and actually the backing fabric that you see on this one is still available through fat quarter shop as well and um, let me talk about the, the pattern itself and then we'll move on to the pantograph and how that worked with the backing fabric. Susan said the most challenging part of this quilt were the circles that you see in the butterfly, um, but she did a nice job. And again, you guys are so close to your quilt for so long that you see all these imperfections. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> really, you do the best you can, but don't worry about it. When it's stitched and quilted and put together and you're seeing it on a bed or up on a wall, um, or draped over something, you're not going to notice all those little points that don't match. It's more that you got the quilt done and that you get to enjoy it. Um, and we do the best we can, like I said, and um, aim per for perfection, but we're not always going to get there. And just enjoy your quilt and don't point out all the mistakes to everybody. <laughs> they don't need to worry about it. Um, and I know we all do that. We're all mo very critical of our own work and we don't need to be. Um, you do your very best job. So I love the colors in this. The back the background fabric, that 
blue, the aqua blue, and then just the, the pops of color all over that butterfly. Then the backing fabric you see has, um, it was the pink um, with almost, you know, like the, their circles, different color circles, almost like the eyes of the butterfly again, you know, that, that you would have on the butterfly wings, really cute. Um, if you notice the pantograph, we chose the Soho pantograph, and is that not perfect? Not only does it match the um, backing fabric with those circles, it has those same circles effect, but the Soho pan pantograph um, has a playful feel, it has the circles, it has the movement of the butterfly, it matches those fabrics really well. It just was wonderful. We even did a winter green color thread on this one top and bobbin thread um, and you notice from the bigger pictures you don't even see that that winter green on the back you just see the texture it really builds up the texture on the back of that quilt but because it complements that fabric so well it just was was perfect the color matched the the backing the background fabric on the quilt top perfectly it matched really really nicely with that and that was called winter green that is also an omni thread and I just think this is the cutest quilt. She said it was a challenge. It's a very large quilt, like I said, 98 by 92. Um, and those blocks are a challenge. And I'm sure it's one of those, that how in this world is this gonna create a butterfly? But when you put all those blocks together, um, and all different kinds of blocks, they're not just the same block over and over. You have some with the circles, some with um, um, more of a cross theme, some that are more of a log cabin, some of them half square triangles, and all different things and how they blend so nicely together uh, to create that butterfly. So if you have somebody in your life that loves butterflies, this would be the perfect quilt. I'm sure they would just, um, uh, they would just love having this one. So really, really cute, Susan, and and uh, she'll be working on the binding on that one, and it may take her a bit. That's a big quilt, but it was super, super pretty, and I'm just thrilled the way this one came together with that pantograph. Sometimes it's like, this is just perfect. It comes together um, just wonderfully. All right, I think I have one more quilt, and this is back to um, one of Becky's quilts, and this is another string quilt. So let me remove this one while you look at some larger pictures, and then we'll talk about it. So I have another string quilt here, and this is Becky's version of a string quilt. Now she used a different pattern. This is actually a free tutorial by Quilty Love, and I will link that down below. And Becky, to make her string quilt, she actually used paper, some sort of paper. And the only reason I know that is not because I talked to Becky about it, but because there were just a, um, one or two spots that I noticed a little bit of paper left on the back. So after, so she had the quilt, or uh, the squares of paper. Um, and you can look at the tutorial, they mentioned di different kinds that you can use. So she had the square of paper there. She stitched straight onto that paper. And then once the block is together, she did remove the paper uh, from the back of that. So then we used regular batting and regular backing um, fabric on the back. And uh, so then everything else stitched out, uh, just like you would any other quilt. One thing I like about this um, string pattern is that each block starts with a white sashing across the block. So um, every time they start with this white one in the middle and then they add fabrics on either side, so here, and then when you put it together then you get these crisscrosses of the white all the way through the quilt. Kind of breaks up the, the uh, scrappiness of it some so it gives your eye a place to rest and it's really cute effect so that's a nice thing and you could do that with any color I mean whatever color you could do something bright or you know even black or something like that that gives a one color throughout the whole thing that matches up when you met when you join the blocks together then it matches up right there at the X and you create this whole grid across the quilt that's really really cute so again all scrappy um, all different sizes some are a little thinner, some are a little wider. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever you have on hand, a great way to use up scraps. 
And this one measures uh, 81 by 96. So this one is even larger than the last one that we showed. So this would be so cute laying out on a bed. Um, kind of gives that grandmother feel to it, doesn't it? I just really like this one. Now, Becky is um, always does a wonderful job of pieced backings. Almost every quilt that she sends me doesn't have a pieced one. Not the earlier one with the... Um, the remix one but this one does and it is so cute so um, if you hold on just a second let me flip this over so that you can see how she did the the backing fabric on this so if you've um, been following for very long you will have seen that another quilt I did for Becky she used the same um, animal print on the back it's such a cute uh, such a cute pattern here um, but so how Becky has joined this one on the top here she has used this aqua print it is not centered it's actually this side of it is much larger this animal print is much larger on this side then she has you know this is probably eight inches wide um, running down from the top to a, to about the middle of the quilt and then this right hand side of it is um, this piece of animal fabric is a little smaller than this one over here then she has this large aqua print in the middle. This runs the entire horizontal um, side to side of the quilt, and it is probably a good 20, 24 inches um, in depth. And then let me move this up so you can see the bottom part. So then after that large horizontal piece, the 20, 24 inches wide, however long, wide that is, um, then here on the bottom, she again has done the animal print and this here on um, this side of it is the larger side and then she's got this aqua print coming down from that horizontal piece down to the bottom and then a smaller print or section over here so you can kind of see up there how she's offset this i mean she very well could have done one long vertical strip connecting this one and this one here but instead she offset them and it just makes it feel like this was meant to be it doesn't feel like Oh, I have to find enough fabric to uh, <laughs> to make my backing wide enough. Um, she really makes the back as interesting as the front. And so um, just learn from Becky. She does a great job of her backing fabrics. Just really, really, really nice. A nice way. It just feels like um, it was meant to be. So the pantograph for this one, if you remember the front, it's the string quilt. So a lot of angular lines on it. So for the pantograph, um, I chose Ginger Snap. All right, and Ginger Snap is this. Um, so you have a circle here with an inner circle. Actually, yeah, two of them, and then it swirls out, and you have a couple loops. So you have the inner circle, the outer circle, then it swirls out and you have a couple loops and then it goes into the next one. This added the circular part to it, you know, because the front was so angular um, and it just really complemented, just kind of the opposite. You know, I've got angular on the front, so let's just add some, some softness to it instead of mimicking that same straight, straight edge like the front. We'll add some movement to it, some softness by adding the circles. It's kind of hard to see on that, um, on those prints. They're so busy, but you can kind of see it over here a little bit. Maybe even on the blue, it shows up. Let's see. A little bit of threads there. But yeah, you can kind of see it on the blue there. And this circle is, um, you know, this middle one, the smaller one is about the size, maybe a little smaller than a quarter, maybe about a quarter size. And then this one's bigger than like a half dollar. And I used a cream color thread, more of an off-white, almost the same one that I've used on several of these. I think the number, this is an Omni thread as well. I almost always use Omni thread. Um, like for this one, I'm using Omni thread in the top, and then I'm using Magna Glide bobbins in the bottom. Those are pre-wound bobbins that I get from um, Habendash, and um, a really good combination. The um, the bobbins in here, I don't know the weights off the top of my head. I want to, I I don't know the weights off the top of my head. Anyway, the bobbin is a little. Um, 
lighter thread, I don't know how to say that, <laughs> than the top. The Omni is a little thicker and then this is a little little lighter. So the backing, back uh, bobbin threads kind of, you know, soak in a little bit more. They're not quite as prominent as the Omni thread on the front. Now, like earlier when, like the uh, Blessings of Spring quilt, when I had that climbing rose reddish color, I am winding my own bobbins, and so those that is Omni in the bobbin and Omni in the top. But when I'm using the pre-wound, then it's the um, Magna Glides in the bottom and the Omni on the top. My machine works really well with Omni. I'm kind of one of those that if it's working, let's not change it. I know there are other long armors who will use glide thread. I tried glide for a while. I really didn't have great success. Not that I couldn't, um, but I would really need to switch everything over to glide so that I'm using glide more often because then I'm not having to change tensions a lot uh, either. Um, you know, the combination between my top tension and my bottom tension. Um, by using the same type of thread every time, I have much less issues with having to uh, adjust, make those adjustments. Um, I still fine tune, I still make small adjustments here and there because some of that depends on, um, honestly it depends on how much um, curvature there is in a design compared to straight lines. Some of the, Sometimes I need to adjust my tension if the pantograph I've used on a previous quilt had a lot of circular and then I'm switching to a pantograph that has more angular or has more stops and starts, you know, more abrupt um, change of direction Then I need to change my, my tension a little bit um, just to make sure that those, um, those all look really, really good. So that's why I've stuck with Omni. It works well in my machine and uh, lots of colors available and um, then I use the, the Magna Glides on the bottom. The Magna Glides are pre-wound and they do have a magnetic core, which then holds them into the bobbin case um, a little tighter. And um, with that magnet, magnetic core in the middle of the bobbin and um, just really nice. I've, I've not had any issues with them at all. And I have basic colors. I have like six basic colors that I use. So like when I'm doing a red thread, they do sell a red Magna Glide. I have not purchased that. That's not something I'm gonna use a lot. So I have some basic colors. And then if I'm doing the mint green like I did earlier, or I'm using that climbing rose color earlier, I will go ahead and uh, wind my own bobbins for those. All right, so that's the Ginger Snap Pantograph and I will link that down below. So you have lots of different options today, a couple different um, string quilts and options on how to make those, and um, some stash busters with the, uh, the what was that, High Tide, I forget the name, High Tide Remix, that's a stash buster as well, and some just beautiful quilts this week. So I'm, um, I am think I'm caught up to things that have gone home and things that I have um, finished and um, getting back in the swing of things after being a gone for a couple days. It's amazing how, how much farther behind you get, but we're getting caught up and getting into the groove of things for the fall time here and uh, settling in. Hope you're having some great weather where you are. We sure are, and it's been an enjoyable few days to be outside. Um, I don't know if you're a gardener, but we're also finishing up those gardening tasks. Uh, my daughter and I, actually my husband and a couple daughters, we've been, last couple evenings, have been trying to put up um, corn and uh, green beans and tomatoes, and so that's kept us really busy as well. But it's so fun to be able to um, put that produce up for the winter time and enjoy the bountiness and, uh, and having our own food is really nice. So that's all I have for this week. I will be back next week with a video. I am getting caught up on some of my own sewing, some of the projects I have going on for clients. I did receive my sew sampler box with uh, in the last couple weeks, so I'll be doing a review of that one. So busy, busy time. Lots of fun things to share. I hope you are making lots of time to quilt. And if you are in need of long arm quilting services, I will link that information down below on how to get uh, your quilt to me if you are a mail-in client. If you are local to me, then um, my information is there as well on how we can get together. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you're working on. And I will see you back here next week because every quilt is worth finishing.